What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Milton Ipocent, coming back with another video. It is not the Bread Force. Unfortunately, it's not the Bread Force. This is actually, we looked at the title, and for those that who just joined, know that I do predominantly shoes. In the past, I used to do a lot of technology. So I'm here to let you know that I'm back with another technological uh, video. So, technological. But anyway. Your boy Milnificent um, was kind of web browsing, kind of phone browsing actually, to try to figure out which phone I want to go to because I currently had or have the Galaxy S8. Now, the Galaxy S8 held its own, um, in my opinion, because I've had it for about two years now, actually a year and a half now. And I didn't upgrade to the Galaxy S9 because when you break down the specs, and for those that don't know, if you go to gsmarena.com, you can have a breakdown step-by-step step on actually process-by-process process, or feature-by-feature, feature, I should say, of the differences between the phones that you get. Because I do a lot of homework, and I want to make sure that when I invest my money into a phone, I'm going to get the best out of the phone. Um, a lot of people, they look for cameras. I think they're kind of gimmicky. Um, so to a certain point, it has to be a significant upgrade in terms of the camera, um, the memory, local memory. I'm an Android user. Um, and then it comes down to what I think a lot of people overlook sometimes. Uh, the process is one thing, but I think that the RAM is very, very important um, when you're looking into a phone. Now, when I transition to another cell phone next year, it's, it's going to be for the 5G network. For those that are not familiar with that, 4G, LTE, 3G is what we operate on now. Unfortunately, with that type of mainframe, that network, that design, that signal has and can carry a lot of interference, right? So if you're browsing online and, you know, your, your, your kids or whatever, they're looking, they're, they have a 4G LTE connection to your cloud base or any type of server where they're watching videos and they buffer or they cut in and out stuff like that is pr primarily because you have signal interference you got airplanes flying or it could be other people driving near you bouncing off the same tower so the whole idea with 5g is when 5g gets rolled out um it'll reduce dramatically it'll reduce that signal interference so you being a user can see dramatic increases of upload and download speed, which is, you know, the type of speed that you, you would have in terms of um, browsing, uploading. You, you'll notice the difference between a 5G connection versus a 4G LTE. And don't get fooled by the whole AT&T 5G e evolution. It's really not 5G. So, you know, you need a 5G phone, phone to work on a 5G network. It doesn't make sense to me to get a phone that's, 5G if you don't have the 5G network rolled out. So I don't really see 5G coming along, at least not till late of next year. Um, there's a lot of towers that have to be upgraded, a lot of new towers that have to be built nationwide. So I'm not really... A <laughs> I read about the 5G technology. I think it's cool. I think it will alleviate, alleviate a lot of problems that happens, um, especially when you're on Netflix, you know, not through Wi-Fi, but just through your regular cell phone provider. Um... And it, it, again, it depends on where you are in the country. Not every place. Uh, and I know AT and T and Verizon like to advertise. Yeah, we got the best network, blah blah blah. But you do have dead zones na nationwide. Just that a lot of us we live in places where we don't notice that. <laughs> Especially for those of us that live in the city or close to the city, like I do. Um, typically, rural areas like farm, far farmlands, stuff like that. You'll notice that the the speed will kind of decrease unless Google inserted their fiber somewhere and you know but I'm not going to rave and rant about that that's that's a whole nother topic I'll get into that probably in another video right now we're going to do the unboxing I'm going to say unboxing of a phone that I was actually looking on um Boost Mobile so going back to that topic when I said one of the things I look at when I look at a phone is RAM so for those that don't know and I'm just paraphrasing, paraphrasing this for people that really don't understand the, the tech geek that I kind of am. I'm not a really a geek, super geek, but, you know, I'm not a, that type of person. But, you know, I do like to learn different things. That's, the, that's, 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 that's just me. So, but anyway, if you have a phone, 
most people, when they take their phone out of the box for the first time, it's like magic. It's it's like it's a brand new phone. You got it out the box. Everything's operating like it should. But then what always happens? Over the course of time, depending on the type of phone, we notice that the phone gets slower, right? This being after whatever updates are being pushed out from a carrier provider or the phone itself. And you're trying to figure out why is this going so slow. So most Apple phones, and kudos to Apple for this, Apple concentrates engineering on processing. So their processing chips are fast, they're efficient. Um, and what happens is people have these applications, right? Facebook, Instagram, uh, web browsing, gaming, you name it. All these applications that are running that you open up one at a time, even though you close them out, you're not really closing them out because oftentimes they're running in the background. When they're running in the background, they need some type of virtual storage. Not a local storage, not the SD card, not a permanent storage, like a temporary storage to store that process, that individual process. So Facebook is a process, Instagram is a process, that video game you're playing is a process, and that also holds its internal memory. And because of that, RAM, random access memory, um, is very dependent on what you're doing. So you can have the latest and greatest processor, but if it's processing so much information, processing this, processing that, and you have different applications running in the background, well, typically what's going to happen is because you don't know what's going on in the background of your phone, it's going to restart. Either the app itself is going to crash because there's no way to, for that processor to store any room, <laughs> you know, on your phone. And oftentimes that's where Apple kind of lacks. That's why I didn't go towards Apple um, simply because if I want more local storage, even the local storage, like the, the SD card, memory I gotta pay thousands of dollars just to get more and, and, and people say oh well just use the cloud I'm sorry if I'm gonna have a high <laughs> quality phone that does 4k video where I have to send the video to the cloud and in order for me to retrieve that video I have to then connect to the cloud really just think of servers or multiple servers in a data center data centers nationwide I have to sit there and log into that server and then hit play in, in hopes of getting a good stream and wait for it to pixelate or clear up. I don't got time for that. I'd rather have that local on my phone. And actually, I do have backups. And don't get me wrong. I, I do use the cloud as well. I back that up. But I would prefer also to have it on my phone just in case. Because if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want to see your kid, you know, do backflips. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, check this out. It's local. I know it's going to be playing in HD just like that. I don't have to wait for the phone to connect to the server. You get what I'm saying. So back to this. So that's where RAM comes. The more RAM you have, and most phones today usually have 6 gigs or up, Android base. And there's still some phones lingering around that's coming out in 2019 that has 4 gigs. 4 gigs is what you would find in this. This is the Galaxy S8. 4 gigs of RAM, not space not memory but four gigs of ram it's fine it's ideal um because i had the galaxy s8 when <laughs> when i had you know the, the the decks all the accessories that came with samsung i am a samsung freak and i ended up getting the vr goggles right so virtual reality for those that don't know the samsung decks was basically just put this right here turns the phone once you put this phone in here you connect the hdmi to like your display monitor right um and of course you power it up and once you put it in there with a bluetooth keyboard and a bluetooth mouth mouth mouse your phone turns it literally into a desktop computer phenomenal and i've used it on here um does tend to slow down a bit hence i mean again the processor on here was pretty good it's just the the ram so, I didn't even stop there. I ended up getting the 2018 Gear Icon X Wireless Buzz. That's what people see me on the streets. They're like, yo, yo, Mil. And they're trying to get my Millie Mil, 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 whatever you want to call it. They're trying to get my attention. And no disrespect to them, but I, I love these because this is phenomenal. Like, I put this in, I put this in my ears. And if I'm not responding to you, <laughs> I guarantee I have this in my head and my ears. And I'm listening to music and I'm carrying on. And then I also have 
the Gear S3 watch where I can make, receive calls, text messages, things like that. So you're watching this video, you clicked on it, and we're about to get to why I changed my phone. So obviously I changed my phone because I was looking for me being a Boost Mobile customer, and I've been a Boost Mobile customer for a while, I know traditionally they don't sell the Note flat out, the Galaxy Note. I was surprised when I went on the website and saw a pre-owned Galaxy Note that Boost featured. Right, so this is big because most people, I'm sorry, most times, before you would go to Sprint, you could get a certain list of phones that are compatible to go from Sprint to Boost Mobile. It's the same company. They use the same towers, for those that didn't know. Um, and what typically would happen is Boost Mobile will say, okay, well, this is kind of like a brand new phone that just came out for Sprint. We're not going to have it just yet. Maybe a year later, and then we'll make that phone compatible with our networks, even though they use the same towers, the same phone chip, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so people were asking me, why, why the heck would you go get a Galaxy Note 8 um, and not get like the Note 9 or, well, I mean, I could do that. Or I could just spend $900 for the Galaxy Note flat out to convert it over to Boost. Or I could just literally get the Galaxy Note 8. GSMarena.com is key because that, that's how I know the specs of each phone. I know how much RAM it's going gonna, it's gonna to take. Um, and before I get into the phone itself, actually, the box that it came in was this. Boost Mobile shipped it out. It's pre-owned. Now, obviously, I already unraveled it, <laughs> converted it. Um, but just to let you know, I'm just because you're the user, you want to find out what, what, what it's like, they obviously ship it in this box. No small box. And it even says it on here. They even tell people to be careful with the type of box that they use when they ship it out. Um, because it's flammable. Because it's a cell phone. Anyway, put that to the side. But it comes in this box, and it'll say pre-owned, right? And once you take this box out, unfortunately, it doesn't come with the bells and whistles as if it's a brand new phone because technically it's pre-owned. But they give you the manual, they give you the power cord, and they give you the phone itself. I spent probably about 10 minutes looking over the phone to see, you know, to find out what defects are, um, if there was any defects on the phone. And, I, you know, I found a couple things, but it wasn't, actually, I found one thing. But it took me a while to find it. I have to <laughs> aim it, it would aim at the phone in a perfect angle in order to see a slight scratch. But, again, this is just a temporary phone. You can see that I actually have the phone activated right there. And I, we're going to jump on the phone so I can show you or give you an example of what I'm talking about in terms of applications that run in the background that can eat up a lot of RAM in your phone. So the more things that are running on your phone over time can cause the phone to slow down. You can have, again, you can have the best processor on the planet, but if you don't have enough RAM to store all these processes, over time, you're going to feel the, um, the unfortunate benefit of that. Not really benefit, but the downfall of that. So, like I said, so... It doesn't come preloaded with uh, Android 9.0, but you can obviously go and manually update. Boom, you're on your way, and it's upgradable to Android Pie. So this is how it comes. And, of course, get your... Of course, I took this out, but you have your, your power cord. You have your uh, USB. And that, that's basically what I, what I mentioned before. Um, and then they tell you, they send you this kind of like green type message saying, oh, thank you for buying a pre-owned phone. You're saving the world by whatever this gimmick is. But anyway, so with that said and done, I'm going to show you real quick. We're going to jump in the phone. As you can see, this came pretty good. Now, the only downfall to this, because <laughs> it's not much of a downfall, the, the phone, like I said, is in excellent condition. Um, I had the pleasure of messing with the stylus pen, the stylus, everything is, is, is good. If you're familiar with the Galaxy Note 8 series, there's plenty of videos of people will show you, show you what the benefits are of having a Galaxy Note 8. Me, I'm just t basically sh giving you an example of what it's like to buy a pre-owned phone from Boost Mobile. I don't think that it's anything wrong with buying a pre-owned phone because you, some people buy a pre-owned house. Some people buy a pre-owned car. There's no different. I think I, I see that trend happening to pre-owned phones simply because the <laughs> premier phones, the 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 real high-priced phones, are getting really high-priced. 
Um, and me, I'm not going to invest my money into brand new phones like that unless there's a significant jump. And like I said, the next one that I'm going to get from this Galaxy Note 8 series will be a 5G ready phone. So that's why I want to get that. We're going to jump into the phone itself so I can show you, like I said, an example of what to look for. Uh, let's say if you had a Samsung or any Android based phone. Um, so you can see for yourself how much RAM that you use over time. We'll jump in the phone. Uh, but before I jump in the phone, I want to say that this was the one glitch that I had. So I had the Galaxy S8. You can see that obviously it's a huge difference between the S8 um, and the S. The, sorry, the, the Note 8. Um, and this one basically comes with dual cameras. It has that dual camera feature. I, was, oh, I love it so bad. Um, and this obviously has a single camera, but that's not the problem. The problem was when I got my Gear VR, it was designed, I have the 2016, sorry, 2017 model. And it's designed to take the S8, the S8 Plus, but it's not designed for the Note 8. So, of course, when I got this phone and tried to put this in here, no. So I ended up having to go get the 2018 version just to fit this phone. I didn't get a chance to actually um, unbox this like I did with the phone. Uh, but yeah, let's just get into the, the phone itself so I can show you, show you about the RAM as soon as I can hopefully get this open. So you know me, I don't edit anything. Uh, I just want to make sure the phone itself will fit in this version of the Gear VR, like I said, it should. Otherwise, we got problems. So, it's kind of like an unboxing for the Gear VR, right? I mean, they look identical. Everything looks the same. But, supposedly this has more of an angle to it to fit the note. That's what I just want to make sure it works. Because if it don't work, that's it. We got problems, Samsung. All right, so let me just slide this in here. Make sure it's in the ape. Now, for those that have Gear VR, you know that if you have it in the slot A position, I don't know how close I have this, but in the A position means that it's going to be it's going to be able to take the bigger devices. In the B position, the Galaxy S8 would be the ideal size. So, put this in here. Up, and it does fit. Locked in there. Okay. Cool. All right. So I, I'm good. I'm okay. I, I feel confident. But it, it, it's it's literally the same thing. And unfortunately, the only difference is that this has a wider angle to put the phone in than that. It's the same. It's it's goggles. But whatever. You know me. I'm a pet feed. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get into the phone. And I'll give you an example of why I decided to invest my money in a phone. It's not only pre-owned, so it costs less. But it performs good. Like you got to understand that the Galaxy Note 8, even though it's a phone that came out in September 2017, probably outperforms most phones that came out in 2019, and even outperforms some cell phone. Come, sorry, not cell phone, laptops that are on display right now, right now in the store. They probably have four gigs of RAM. It says six. So this is a no-brainer. And I almost got the Galaxy 10e, but I kind of eased away from that when you know you can't. The stylus pen, the size of this phone, the processor, the RAM, which is pretty much the same thing as the Galaxy 10e. This was a no-brainer, and I saved $400. So, anyway, let's get into the phone. See you later. Okay, and we are back, and I'm actually going to make sure this kind of works. You could probably see it on my screen. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, I have the stylus pen. I'm going to be operating on a stylus pen. We are looking at my phone right now. So let's just take a look at the RAM. Um, go to settings. We're going to go to device care. And we're going to go to memory. So I'm going to show you an example of processes that are, or applications actually running in the background. So you can see that I have a total of 6 gigs of RAM, not internal space. Not, okay, so this is random access memory. And according to my phone, I have these applications as my primary applications, they're the ones that are running in the background, even though I don't have it right in front of me. If I hit view more, I'll start seeing system applications that actually run in the background. So you can see that there are a lot <laughs> of applications, even though they're not big in size. You can see like some of here is like three megs, some 15 megs. 
um, download manager, 22 megs. You can see like there's all these things running in the background. And over the course of time, that's why I was saying in the phone, the phone itself, uh, when you're looking at it, um, can basically pile up these uh, processes. So I know that if I hit clean now, I know over time it's going to basically, actually instantaneously, it's going to close most of these applications. And I'll put quotations around close because a lot of these applications that we've just closed up, they're going to restart. So it says that it freed up 1.8 gigs worth of RAM, meaning, and you can see that I'm already halfway full because it still needs to process. The phone still needs to operate um, outside of just the applications itself. So I'm going to go back out and I'm going to hit memory. And if you watch, watch carefully, some of these apps actually restart themselves. So if I hit view more, you're going to see right here, you see how it just jumps up from 100 to 149. <coughs> so it's just over time, you'll see that it's going to just basically, these are applications that we quote unquote closed, um, but they restart. <coughs> but this is what I'm talking about. Um, how applications that you think you, you, you closed out actually come back and they're running in the background. They're always going to be running in the background. Um, so, for instance, if I wanted to permanently close, and I and just be careful because if you're not familiar with the phone, I wouldn't suggest you do this. But, for, for instance, Galaxy Store, I know I don't need that unless I need updates or I need to download something. Um, so what I do in order to close this permanently, I'm going to jump out of here. Actually, I'm just going to slide this down. I'm going to hit settings. And then I'm going to go to applications. Um, I can clearly type it here, but I'm just going to scroll just to make this kind of friendly here. So the Galaxy Store, I probably passed it, which is right here. We're going to hit that. We're going to force stop it. So if I hit storage, I hit clear cache and clear data. Now, <coughs> the cache you want to, you want to clear because it's just memory or it's just it's just data that that's stored um kind of temporarily but you don't really need it because it's gonna all data is going to change each time that you you basically open up application you can clear data but it's going to clear all your information like your login information um, or whatever presets that you had to that application it's like you're starting anew so let's just see if this actually closed it out so we're going to go back out we're going to hit settings and we're going to go to device storage I'm sorry, device care, go into memory and see if we see the Galaxy Store kind of like browsed, let me hit view more, and you see that we do not see the Galaxy Store because we permanently closed it and it's not going to restart yourself. So that's kind of a way, if you're looking at your phone, especially Android users, that's a way of you closing out the app. Now, there's certain applications that actually have accounts. So what I mean is, even though you did what I just showed you in terms of the four stop, uh, clearing cache, even deleting the, the, the actual data, some applications require you to log an account. Um, and they'll actually create an account on your phone. So what I mean by that is if I go to, oh, just to let you show that, or I'm going to show you real quick before we get into that. Uh, if I go to mobile networks, if I type in mobile networks, as you can see, I kind of preset. You can see down here, right here, you can see my stylus mobile networks, you see that I'm on Boost Noble's network. Um, what happens is basically when I started the phone up for the very first time, it basically gave you the option of do you want to start a new line or do you want to transfer your original line from, you know, from one phone to another? Obviously, I chose that. And once I logged in using my online credentials, everything transferred over from the text messaging, the phone calls, and of course, I had all my accounts backed up, so it was seamless and easy to um, to basically set this up. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, but where are we going? Oh, so I'm going to go back into, actually, let me pull this up real quick, the Android version, just to let you know that, yes, I am running Pi right here. Going back out. Go to accounts. That's where we're going at. So we're going to go to accounts. I'm just going to type it. Uh, because a lot of these apps that you use, some of these apps that you use actually make an actual account and they store it on your phone. So even though you're clearing cache, even though you're deleting or force stop and everything, um, sometimes it's able to, 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 <laughs> to actually put itself back in. You can see that these apps, like the Nike app, 
create an account here. And if I didn't want this account here permanently, I then remove the account and then that will blow away everything that any, anything associated to the phone, it'll take it off. So for those who are just looking at their, your Android phone for the first time, um, you might want to see what you're actually logged into. You can see I, I am logged into a lot of things. Um, so just letting you know, I don't mind you seeing all this because it really doesn't bother me. But anyway, so that's what I wanted to show you, that random access memory. That's what I look for when I shop on for phones. I'm looking to make sure that this is a phone that I know because I have a bunch of custom things on this phone, on my phone at least, my tablets, all that type of stuff. Everything is encrypted, so I have to make sure that all the processes that I have are open, that the RAM is enough to function for the for the phone over time. I want to make sure that this is a good quality running phone, so I look at the specs. And so going back to what I was saying because a lot of people don't believe me, um, I'm going to pull up an example. So this is the Google Pixel 3a XL that released um, or is releasing soon. And the one thing that, I mean, I get that it's a, a, it's a good brand new phone. Um, that's this part right here is what I didn't like. Um, we can see a circle, with the, which is the 4 gig RAM. And we go to, that's even for you Apple users, Apple's iPhone X Max, 4 gigs of RAM. It's a great processor, but that RAM, like I said, <laughs> that's that's what I, that's what kind of screwed me around. And actually, I actually sent the message to my one of my friends, so that's why you, you see the message there. But then when you go to the Galaxy Note 8, you see right here, clear as day, it has six gigs of RAM. So this phone came out again. This phone came out in September 2017. This phone came out, and I believe it was either August or September 2018. So. It, you got to figure that this is a, a two-year-old phone, but it has the best, <laughs> one of the best um, processors, at least in the game, as well as the, the RAM. That The RAM is, is, is key. They, they all work in hand, the processing, the RAM, the memory, it all works hand in hand. And that's what I wanted to show you guys today. So again, going with Boost Mobile, if, you ever, if you're a Boost Mobile user and you're thinking about getting the Note 8, I highly recommend it because of, just because of the simple... Um, fact that it's a note <laughs> right it's a note it has six gigs of ram the performance is out of this world it is a game changer like this is my first note ownership and i this makes me want to go to the note 10 s i'm sorry the note 10 the note 10 5g when it comes out um and i'm going to be looking forward to that so your boy milton Nificent, i'm signing off i'll be coming back with another video and I look forward to reviewing what's coming in. I told you I was going to come back with some surprises. And quite frankly, <laughs> I am very surprised at this phone. I'm having all types of fun with And I'm just going to sign off right here. You know, milk, nif, scent. Uh, yeah, I kind of messed that up. But anyway, subscribe to your boy if you haven't subscribed to him. If you subscribe to me, I'll subscribe to you. I want to have a special shout out to um, everybody on YouTube for actually just participating with me. I didn't realize I hit the 500 mark, so there will be a future video that will show uh, me giving away something. It's not too big, but it's just basically my, my thank you for, for the subscriptions and watching the videos. I really appreciate you guys. Um, any information that I pertain, I'm going to try to basically show you guys on a daily basis what to look for in your phone so you're getting the most out of it. So I'm back in the tech game, but I'm also still in the shoe game. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. Again, your boy Milton Nevis, I'm signing off. And I look forward to the next video. Peace.